Hey, John Gidlin here. Tonight we're gonna to take a look at Caroline, Don't You Follow. This is kind of a really special song because this started out as uh, my oldest son, Cameron, wanted to see how to record. So it kind of brought him down and he was playing bells at the time. And we came up with the core of this song that night. So this is really cool. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like, and here we go. Right, so as I mentioned, this song started out where my oldest son wanted to know how to record. So brought him down to the studio. First thing you want to do when you're writing a song is sort of come up with a rhythm and basic kick, kick hi-hat, you know, not even a snare, nothing crazy here. Just kind of created this or sort of established a song, right? And this was just using one of the built-in uh, Studio One uh, percussion keyboard sounds. And so he was playing bells at the time, so it really started with that, and then I was just messing around with uh, my acoustic, and then he was playing bells. So the original song was actually from here to here, and that was it. It was just sort of wasn't supposed to be any bridge, nothing at all. Uh, and then so after doing that, I'm like, well, if you have a song, you know, you need to play a bass guitar. So. I basically just played, you know, following you know, exactly, you know, what I had done on acoustic and then wanted to say, okay, you know, break out, you know, electric guitar, add that, here's another track. And that is basically my Les Paul with a univibe, really fast, sort of like sound garden-y sort of sound. And that was it minus, that's right, there is the shakers here. This would have been done that night. And that is just doubling, you know, an egg shaker. So that was really the song, and that was it. Uh, I kind of started listening back to it later. I'm like, that's actually like a really cool sound. And so I wanted to finish it. And so all I did is I just took what we did and copied it two more times. So took the whole song, because obviously that was way too short. That's when I had to come up with, you know, uh, verse and then I came up with this uh, chorus sound and you can see there's no there's no bells there because this was all done after the fact same rhythm different vocal um, and so then of course once it comes out of the chorus you need sort of like a solo or something that's where I came up with And that's just sort of a longer delay. Uh, that would have been a del uh, deluxe memory man. Probably used um, a chorus effect, which I always use. And that was through a Marshall, my Marshall 1979 JMP. So that would have been that. And then, so I remember, yeah, there was this, at one point I thought there could have been a harmonica, but what I ended up doing was this synth sound instead of doing a slide. So it's a panning synth going between each ear. And that was actually done, if we take a look at this, my keyboard actually wasn't working at the time. So I played this with my mouse. And that's how you get this sort of sporadic sound that goes through it. Um, definitely wouldn't be able to play that. And, I, you know, it just gives it a different sound. And it looks like at one point, I tried out a harmonica. So if it would have been, you know, uh, Bob Dylan versus Pink Floyd, you know. And so obviously that's not what I went with. So these are just my ways of taking the song after I had doubled it. It was like, okay, you got your slide guitar, you got your synth sound, um, and then it sort of ends just finger picking, I think the same two chords that are in the beginning. And that's basically how I set it up. We take a look at vocals here. What you doing on the midnight train? 
lot of reverb. Actually, it looks like I have double reverb. I have no idea what I was thinking on that, but it definitely gives it that long, spacey sound. Caroline. And then at the chorus, I added the... Just the falsetto there. And sort of keep that same sort of thing throughout the second verse. And then, yeah, when it gets to the end. So that third chorus, no falsetto. That kind of changes it up there. And then, yeah, just a ton of reverb on the end vocal. So if we take a look at that. Yeah, it looks like I even took all the compression out. Not exactly sure why I did that. It might have just been because it was so low. Uh, really wasn't singing, just a little, you know, kind of falsetto -y type of thing there. So that is it. That is how I took something that started as an experiment in recording and just made it into something much more big and <laughs> grand, you know, from there. So hope you like it. Make sure to subscribe and like, and we will catch you next time.